Jai Hind and welcome everyone to eighth day of ten day skill development program on food and beverage service. My name is Indranil Bose and I will be the today's moderator for today's session. Today we will begin with an online guest lecture on rum, followed by demonstration on rum based cocktail. For this we have an eminent speaker, Mr. Vinay Punia. Mr. Vinay has experience of more than ten years in industry in which he has worked with renowned brands like Westin. Aman Hotel, ITC, Millennium, in India and abroad. He has attended the World of Spirits. He has also worked with number one bar of Abu Dhabi out of 750. The bar name is part of hospitality team of Abu Dhabi HSBC Golf Tournament and Grand Prix Abu Dhabi. Grand uh, Abu Dhabi F1 at Yas Marina Circuit. Mr. Vinay feels delighted when he's connecting with people. And his philosophy of life is cocktails are better judged with, uh, without uh, context. Books and people are never judged by its cover. It should be a complete self experience. And we should have fun every single day. Experience and knowledge will definitely give us a better understanding about the rum. We welcome him on behalf of Bikaji Kama Subharti College of Hotel Management. Now, without further ado, we will turn over to our speaker, Mr. Vinay. Mr. Vinay, over to you. Thank you so much, sir. Hope everyone. I think there's a technical glitch. So what is rum? Rum is a spirit made by distilling fermented sugarcane product, usually molasses. The principal standard of production are located in Jamaica, Guinea, Trinidad. It is the contraction of Latin word sacrum, meaning sugar, 
or its sweetness. So this is the world map that we have. That is a world map, or we can say that's where they produced the largest or where they started the rum. If we look closely, we can see that the cities or the town those produce rum. So we can see Havana. We can see. Cuba or Cuba, you can see Haiti, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Puerto Rican, U.S. Virgin Island, British Virgin Island, Nicaragua. So you can see Venezuela. They the produce the rums. Let's see how the rum is produced. So rum is produced from sugar cane. So we can see the rum is a byproduct of a sugar cane, freshly cut cane. The cane is cut and then crushed among the roller, and then the juices are extracted. The residual pulp, called as bagues, is crushed several times to ex ex uh, extract all the juices. So this is how bagues look like when we extract the juices from the sugar cane. That's how bagues is. Bagues is often used as a factories as a fuel in the boiler. So we can. Say that like the first sugar cane is grown, then the juice is extracted, then the leftover the juice has been taken to the factories, and then the bag is left over. When it is dried, it is used as a fuel. So the sugar cane we can say it's used hundred percent of the sugar cane. The extract is heated among the like boiling points. It is then cooled and crystallized sugar is removed. Uh, removed. The result is dark. By this process, sugar crystals and are removed for commercial sugar. So whatever the left, like leaves, are very dark, twitchy liquid called as mo. This is how molasses look like. Then the regular molasses or the black strap molasses. It has fifty-eight calories. That is, has less calories, forty-seven. 15 carbon per sugar is 12 carbon 7 mg sodium at 172 calcium that's how they compare second this is then diluted with water and fermented means the molasses that is diluted with water and then it is fermented there are two method of fermentation that is quick method that produce white and light flavor rum second one is slow method that produce dark and heavy rum Distillation: The fermentation from take place by distillation of light rums in a patent still. Will be a white and have only a little flavor. If the liquid is matured in it, be sold as a white rum. And should be matured in a charred cask for three years, and have a little caramel added just for the add put the color is known as gold. Then you see the rum how rums are produced. The dark rum production will be distilled in a pot still that is strength of eighty six percent alcohol. The spirit will be rich in congeners and flavors and aroma genes. The congeners are those particles that. Come from the base to the spirit. Before the bottling, the rums are reduced to a potable strength of around forty-one percent by the addition of demineralized water, demineralized water or demi water, or where the minerals are used removed. Then we can see how it is gone through. First, we get the molasses or water. Then fermentation will take for around like five days to twenty days. Then distillation in Cuba, they take patent distillation in Jamaica. They go for like pot distillation. Then the filtration or alternate layers of the charcoals. Then they mature in a sometimes in uncharred oak or in a charred oak for three years. Then they do bottling and then they selling.
Now let's see a video that is from WSET about drum production. I'm Maggie Campbell and I'm the head distiller and vice president at Privateer Rum. I'm here to talk about rum today, which is my ultimate. Never from the sugar beet. Sugar cane can come in either crystallized form, fresh pressed juice, or molasses. Molasses is definitely the most popular. Rum is definitely thought to originate throughout the Caribbean, although there are definitely traditions of distilling cane all across the globe. Within the Caribbean, you have different islands that were settled by different countries. In France, for example, they learned to develop sugar from the beet, so the cane made in the Caribbean actually stayed there. Whereas a lot of the British islands where they relied on that sugar to be sent back, you're finding the leftover process from sugar molasses to be used for a lot of those styles of rum. All these sugars are then mixed. The wash, once done fermenting, is totally dry. Actually, about eight percent alcohol. Then it's distilled, um, and the first distillation is often known. Either be done in a column still or a pot still. A pot still will give you round, supple flavors and less purity, but more flavor throughout distillation. A column still will give you a lot more forward and direct flavor and give you more purity but less intensity of flavor. In rum distillation, oftentimes you'll find that distillers distill on both types of stills to get a variety of these levels of intensity of flavor. Then, as these spirits age, they'll go through and they'll taste these different batches from different stills and marry those different characters together. throughout the distillation and barrel selection process. Rum can be clear in the bottle and actually have been aged in barrel. Oftentimes, if a rum is clear style rum that has been aged, it's been aged in barrel to soften and mellow some of the more aggressive characteristics. And then it's charcoal filtered to remove that color but still retain all the elegance it got from barrel aging. Then some of the stronger, more fiery spirits that are dyed dark and known as dark rum can often be done that way for a certain style or to give certain character. And then often dark rums can in fact be very long-term aged. So it's kind of important to know if you're getting one that's dark in color or dark due to aging. Then there's amber rum, which is the category in between those, which is aged in oak barrels for a moderate amount of time. One of the most important things about rum is that oftentimes it ends up in a cocktail. So texture is really important for bringing that character to the cocktail and adding it as a component to your final drink. If you want to learn more about rum or other spirits, please check out the WSET qualifications at WSETglobal.com. So after this, so after this, we will know like how the proper like Caribbean rums are being prepared, how they do. We produce these rum from these two pots here, known as pot stills. For us, it makes the best product you can think of. It is heavier in character, has the flavor and the aromas. We make rums as a blend of, of column and, and pot. And it's interesting because we basically can make a better rum from a blend of column and pot than if we had either still alone. Without the column still, we just couldn't get as balanced a spirit. And without the pot still, we just couldn't get the uh, depth of flavor. Rum is made from molasses. In the Caribbean, we have a lot of sugar plantations still. So wherever you have a sugar plantation, you would have a sugar factory. So it's natural that rum follows. It's what we drink, what we produce. The sugar factory is to make sugar. But the byproduct is molasses, which is black in color and bittersweet in taste. And it has a certain amount of sugar. What you do is that you use the sugar in the molasses and you ferment it. 
This section here is known as the fermenting area, and this is basically where it all starts. Where the molasses and the water and the yeast is mixed, and then goes what is known as the fermenting to the fermenter. And it What you're seeing here is a chemical or biological it's reacting with and causing it to give you this reaction. The alcohol levels that you will get here will be some 6 to 7, sometimes 8%. Now you want to separate the alcohol from the waste product. That is where the distillation process comes in. Distillation is separating two liquids that have different boiling points. So you take this fermented liquid and you heat it. When you get to 80 degrees C, the alcohol becomes vapor, so it comes away. So you take that vapor and you trap it and you purify it and you condense it and everything, and that's the rum. And then your blenders come in and say what they're going to do with it, whether they're going to age it or how they'll age it and what type of barrels and what they'll do and what they'll make. Well, this is our 15 year Right behind us, you see these beautiful old bourbon barrels. The rum is actually aging. So next we will go is with the Types. First, we have like uh, lighter rums. Those are like aged for one year in glass or stainless steel or uncharred barrels. The next, we have like darker rums. Those are matured for a long time for like six to 12 years. And then aromatic is a com combination of special quality of river water on the island of Java in Indonesia or the addition of dried red Javanese rice cakes, which are added to the mash during the fermentation. Result in highly aromatic and dry taste of rum. Then like how we do the storage. We usually store in a cool place. Dark rum does not lose the flavor. Next, how do we serve rum? Like the service of rum. It can be served in a rock glass or like an old fashioned. Spiced rum. Spiced rum are similar to those like gold or dark rums in that they are aged in color, changing barrels. Change their color. Either they are get the color with the cask or their like caramel is added. Or anything that change the color. Though it is not like any hard and fast rule about like adding of spice to the rum, but infusion tend to take place towards the tail of the aging process. That's usually somewhere in six to one month, depending on who's making it, or which brand they are producing, which brand is making that rum. Like next, what are the like spices that are added in the rum? Like example, the famous is like Captain Morgan spice rum. But as such, there's a hint of vanilla or like some brown sugar, which is like part of molasses or some warming spices with much like how there is no way to make the rum. There's no universal law for how to lay. The more Roll in the putting in the rums, white some set range. We talk about the taste of the spiced old monk, or oh, sorry, Captain Morgan rum, a pleasing aroma of rum and a light accent of cloves, cinnamon, and nutmeg. All follows. I sense a very light oak, a bread. A backdrop in the air, which gives the note 
pines. The next we will study in the rum is kashasha or kashasa. That is like a in common terms we say this is a rum that's come from Brazil, but kashasa is a distilled spirit made from fermented sugarcane juice. In rum we use molasses, but in this we use the sugarcane juice, which is some places is also called as pinga or kenya. That has a sugarcane spirit, which is similar to rum. It is produced around 2 billion liters each year or every year. Has a two variety or the kashasha has a two variety that is unaged, which is called as branca in Portuguese, white, prata, or silver. And other one is aged, which is called as amarela, yellow, oro, or gold. So white kashasha, kashasa, it is usually bottled immediately after distillation and tend to be cheaper. Some producer age it for, aged it for up to like 12 months in a wooden barrel to achieve the smoother blend. It is often used as an ingredient in a caprinia, which is a cocktail and other mixing beverages. Next is a dark kashasha. It is usually as a premium variety in the aged in wooden barrels and mean to be drunk neat. It is usually aged up to three years through some ultra premium dough. It has been aged sometimes up to 15 years when it is flavored influenced on the type of wood or a barrel used. So what kind of wood or what kind of barrel do we use for the kashasha? They say is a kuka fresca, kashasa oro, is made from sugarcane that is hand picked and pressed. Then aged in a Brazilian jequitiba wood for four years or another entry of like Novo Fogos like two wood series that is kashasa Graciosa, which is aged for two years in American oak barrels, then finished for 18 months in Castahira do Pera, which is like Brazilian nut barrel. There are like varieties of region in Brazil where we can see it is like fine pot still is done for cachaça. It's produced such as like Chagrand in Pernambuco state, Selenas in Minas Gracia state, Parati in Rio de Janeiro state. Monte Alegre in Dusul, Sao Paulo state, Abaira in Bahia state. Nowadays, the producer of Kathasha can be found in most Brazilian region. Around they have 40,000 of them for now. Now, we have studied like rum. Now, we will find like what is the difference between these two. Like a Brazilian rum, it is called as Kathasha, and then between a rum. The major difference between these two, or the rum and Kathasha, is that. Rum usually made from molasses or a byproduct after refinery boils the cane juice to extract as much as sugar crystals as possible. While the kashasa is made from different, uh, like a fresh sugar cane juice, which is then fermented and then it is distilled. Some rum in particular, like rum agricole or French Caribbean, are also made by later processes. Cuban rums. That is six Cuban rum. They are distilled in a patent still, light rum with a fragrant and refreshing taste. Main rums are Cata Blanca or Cata Oro. In the world map, on a close up, you can look. The major then the famous Guyana rums or like Demarara is also comes from the Guyana. The characteristics of Guyana rum, most rums are Demarara, very famous full body dark rum distilled in a pot still. Main industries like Enmore, Diamond, and Versailles. Demarara, like when we call like Demarara, is from Guyana. So study about a little bit about what are the Demarara. Demarara rums often comes from Guyana. It is made on the bank of Demarara River in Guyana, and all Demarara rum comes from there. 
regardless where they are aged and bottled. It is made from sugarcane grown near the coast of the country of Demarara, along the river banks, and are distilled by the Demarara Distillery Limited, that is DDL. The DDL warehouse in Diamond can store up to a million and a half bottle of rum. Next, we will see like about healthy rums. Is the characteristics of healthy rum? Cane juice is used for making rum. Double distilled in a pot still. First is, uh, distillation gives clearance. Second distillation makes clearance medium to full body drum. Main distillation, Porto Prince, renowned Damien distillery of rum, bubble coat. Next, we will study about the like, Jamaican rums. That is where the Jamaica on the map. Jamaican rum. It is described as Bordeaux of Caribbeans. Full flavored, dark, and rich rums get color from caramel. In olden days, they were called as like wet burn or plumers. Molasses allowed to ferment in naturally in the air and then it is distilled, matured in oak cast for minimum five years. Then it is shipped to England. Sorry, in the modern days, where molasses and distilled three ways to produce three distinctive styles of rum. In patent distilled, after short fermentation to give high alcohol result in light rum, called common theme. In pot still, made from cane juices mixed with molasses, result in medium bodied rums. After long fermentation, distilled in pot still, made with molasses or heavy bodied rum. The other famous one is Puerto Rican rums. Of Puerto Rican rums are their largest producer in whole of the Caribbean's leading producer of white rum, manufactured of from molasses, double distilled in patent still, not matured in cask. That is intent to be clear. Famous brand like Bacardi, Ron Rico, Ron Viejo. Then we will see like how the bottles, how they do the bottling in Bacardi. The process of getting the rum into the bottle begins with 120,000 bottles rolling on the line every eight hours. This scanner checks these bottles for chips or cracks in the glass, imaging 380 bottles per minute. And we'll reject any potential hazard to our customers. Then they're turned upside down and rinsed. And one real fact here is that they get rinsed with rum. We cannot use water. The reason why we cannot use water is that that residual water can affect the proof in our rum. Bacardi uses 80,000 gallons of rum a year just to clean the bottles. Next, the bottles head to the filling station. There's a reason the action is behind plexiglass. The bottles travel up to 50 miles per hour. Because of all the timing, all the precision that is needed for all these bottles to get on the star wheels, if one bottle gets hung up in one of those buckets, that's the crack. So imagine picking up glass from 15 up to 30, 40 bottles. That's a lot.
the bottles are then capped and labeled with extreme precision. Because you have these high-speed cameras taking nothing but pictures on the front labels and the back labels. Each label is scrutinized to ensure it's placed within a fraction of an inch of the exact position. So next, you know, one of the famous brand of rum is Appleton, which is renowned worldwide. So we now we will look at how it is being made. What are the about the island of the Appleton? In Jamaica, it's passion that makes us dance to our own beat and sing in harmony. Our pulse has a vibrant energy that gets channeled into everything we do. Just like a great song, rum is the culmination of many things done in the right tempo. A chorus of determination, pride, and a whole lot of unbridled joy. When chicken the corn, so the corn can grow, mama. Hey, when chicken the corn, so the corn can grow, hey. A vibration from the pluck of a guitar string can travel deep into your soul. It speaks a universal language that connects us all. To understand the beat by which our island thrives is to know the song of the slow churn of molasses and to hear the island calling you back. The spirit that drives Jamaican excellence is present every time you take that exquisite sip of rum. Rum is an alcoholic spirit made from sugarcane byproducts such as molasses or directly from sugarcane juice by a process of fermentation and distillation. The result is the elegant symphony of flavors right there in your glass. Unlike other spirits, rum is diverse and unique, just like the countries that produce it. Each region has their own specific style and flavor depending on how the rum is crafted. Here at Appleton Estate, we make only premium gold rum, aged in American oak barrels that once held bourbon. As rum ages, it not only darkens but gains complexity and flavor. Our portfolio is expansive and includes our signature blend, perfect for making simple cocktails, as well as our older rums, reserve blend, rare blend. Priceless, like rum on earth. Although we've been making rum in Jamaica for centuries, as old and rich as the sugar it's made from. In the 15th century, sugar was a precious commodity in Europe and could only be afforded by the very wealthy. Its demand was further fueled by its scarcity, as it was very hard to find the perfect environment where sugar cane could thrive. But on his second voyage to the New World, Columbus brought sugar cane with him and found it not only thrived on this beautiful island, it flourished. And where there's sugar cane, there's rum. By the time the British took they had already established a full-scale plantation system on other islands and quickly replicated this in Jamaica. As different countries colonized the Caribbean, But, no matter how the rum is produced, it takes less time to find its way to you. That's because it ages roughly three times faster in the Caribbean than it does in cooler climates, quickly filling your glass with the best rum on earth. Jamaica, for centuries, has been known for producing some of the world's most precious rum. That's because we've established our own set of high standards. In order to be authentically Jamaican, every drop of rum must be made using Jamaican limestone filtered water, use a byproduct of sugarcane and fermentation, and be distilled on the island. It must also adhere to the standards of minimum age. This means the age on the bottle refers to the youngest drop of rum in the blend. By law, we also never use artificial coloring, sweeteners, or any additives to impact our already perfect flavor or aroma. 
each high standard is critical. So when you see Jamaica rum on the bottle, you know you're drinking one of the finest spirits in the world. Which brings us here to the oldest sugar estate and rum distillery in continuous production in all of Jamaica. In 1749, we found our voice in rum and our instrument in the land, which gave birth to Appleton Estate. Our estate sits in the unique topography of cockpit country in the Nassau Valley, a lush and fertile landscape that's nestled inland in the heart of Jamaica. These rare landscapes, called karsts, are made of cone-like limestone hill formations, which act as a natural filter to the crystal clear water that rolls through our hills and rises up in our natural blue spring. This. to make the finest rum from cane to maker like our master blender Joyce Spets she's the first years experience at Appleton estate David Morrison our senior blender has been learning from Joyce since 2003 just as she learned from the master blender before her our master blender is part artist and part scientist with a passion, pride and determination to create one of the finest spirits in the world, a rum that is elegant and complex. For us here at Appleton Estate, rum is our art, our song, our joyful expression of excellence and the perfectly tuned string that unites every one of us in Jamaica. We hope that now, whenever you take a sip of Appleton Estate rum, you will be filled with the spirit of Jamaica. Thank you, Mr. Punia, for gaining our knowledge about rum. The presentation was excellent. Now we will move forward towards demonstration of rum-based cocktails. We are moving towards demonstration. So we will prepare a rum-based cocktail named as hurricane. Usually the cocktail is served in a hurricane glass. In this cocktail we need light rum, we need dark rum, we need passion fruit puree, orange juice, sweet and sour and some orange juice. The method will be used is shaken. All keep it in all the ingredients together in a shaker and then we start it. We will take around 30 ml of light rum. Put some straw and some 
That's your hurricane with nitrum, dragon, passion fruit, puree, bread and syrup, orange juice and sweet and sour. Thank you. Another one cocktail we will prepare is painkiller. So it has dark nut, pineapple juice, coconut cream and orange juice. Method use is shaken with orange peel as a garnish. First we will chill our glass. Garnish it with orange peel. So this is a painkiller cocktail which has orange juice, pineapple juice, coconut cream and a base of dark milk. Thank you and enjoy your drink. Next we will prepare old fashioned rum. So first we will take an old fashioned glass but the classic old fashioned is with whiskey but here we will prepare it with the rum we will take a light pea of it is small we can take two Because this sugar cubes is if you want put some cherry brine to it. Sweet maraschino cherry brine. Yeah, you do that. Tom. 
Sugar syrup because the mango is sweet, we cannot trim it like with the salt because salt and mango does not accompany each other. So, we we'll use some powdered sugar, we can use white, we can use brown powdered sugar. There's already sugar in the mango, sugar on the rim. Continuation of the frozen cocktail, 
Now this time we will prepare a simple strawberry daiquiri in a frozen style. First we will take a blender, we will put rum inside. A very very little sugar syrup. We have a juice. I will put strawberry syrup. Or strawberry fresh. with a big napkin or poster inside. Thank you. Next in the list we will prepare a bamboo. It's a rum based cocktail but people know this cocktail by the name as a medicine. For this cocktail we will take some rum And we'll serve it in a hot glass. So we'll make good. Put some cinnamon stick. Rum. We will pour some sugar to it. Try to mix. And at the end, we will add some hot water to it. like you can add a lemon we will grate some nutmeg on the top
and that's how it look when you get the weighted net black on the top. So that's it's like a medicine or like after your food you can enjoy this in like a cold winter. Thank you. So next in the list cocktail is zombie. So zombie is a rum based cocktail which has dark rum, gold rum, white rum, pineapple juice, orange juice, cherry brandy, sugar syrup and a lemon juice. For the zombie we take a tall glass. Fill our glass, then we'll add like around 20 20 ml gold rum, and we'll add dark rum, and add light rum to it. We'll add some juice. Add some simple syrup. We'll add some orange juice. And again, we'll add the pineapple juice. It's a builder's method. Everything is mixed and then we just stir it nicely so everything gets mixed together. And then garnish with nice and at the end. We will add some cherry brandy on the top. This is some like to have it shake, but the build up is the best way so you can taste everything. Thank you. Now we will prepare the Caprinia cocktail, which is one of the most famous cocktail prepared by the base of rum. But in this cocktail, we will take Kashasha. Kashasha is a Brazilian rum. So, simple, we just take some lemon glass or a shaker, we'll put some sugar. And then we will try to mix them. Not very hard, but we'll try to mix them. And then we will add our kashasha to it. Serve this in an old fashioned glass. We shape. Extract the flavor of sugar, lemon, and sugar. And we will serve like that. And then we'll add some ice to it. And sugar. 
Control. Thank you so much. We will start with the rough cocktails. The first cocktail we will learn today is the most basic and most easy cocktail of the rum. That name is Daiquiri. The ingredients are rum 45 ml, 15 ml of lemon juice and 15 ml of sugar syrup. So we will start with it. First we will put 45 ml of rum. I will put 15 ml of lemon juice and then 15 ml of sugar syrup. Now we will shake it. And make sure the glass is chilled. Now we will it. We will pour in a tight glass. And then we will garnish with a lemon twist. Then we can keep it on the side, we can keep it inside. Thank you. So next cocktail we are going to prepare is pina colada. For pina colada we need white rum or we can use a coconut rum that is Malibu with some pineapple juice, coconut cream or if you like to add some like coconut milk as well you can add but I personally don't prefer coconut milk, we prefer coconut cream. First we need to chill a tall glass. This cocktail is prepared by a blending method. So in a blender, then we'll add some coconut. and put some pineapple juice um, around 45 ml to 60 ml We will serve in a chill glass. With a garnish of cherry and pineapple and straw. So next cocktail we are going to prepare is Brass Monkey which has rum, light rum, vodka and orange juice and we will serve that in a tall glass. So, first of all, 
tip of a glass for ice. Then put some ice in a shaker. We will put around 30 ml of rum and 30 ml of vodka together. Give them a nice shake. We'll just top it up. Orange juice. Garnish of orange with cherry. Double straw and a stir. Thank you. Next cocktail we're gonna prepare is Cuba Libra. Or we call it in Spanish it's called as Cuba Libre. Actually, when Cuba was fighting for its independence. So the soldiers in the midnight when they have their drinks they used to shout like Cuba Libra, Cuba Libra for the liberty of Cuba. So from there this cocktail came. Simplest cocktail. Ice. I personally prefer dark rum. Squeeze the juice and leave it inside and then top up with Coca Cola. With a straw and a stir. Thank you. So next cocktail we're gonna prepare is cremate. For the cremate, we require organ called as rum cremate. We require cinnamon stick, some sugar, some lemon. For the cremate, we took a glass and we will add some cinnamon sticks. Some peas, coffee beans, and then we we'll add some sugar. And now we will add some rum that is flumby. We will flumby the rum and we will add to it. And then we will go slowly. If some guests want, they can add some lukewarm or some hot water to it as well. So this is like a medicine with some hot water pour on the top. Thank you. Next cocktail we're gonna prepare is dark and stormy. So the dark is dark rum and stormy we use either ginger ale or ginger beer. Ice full in a glass. Then we will put around 45 ml of dark rum. And the next ingredient is ginger ale.
and garnish with the orange slice or a lemon slice with a straw and a so next cocktail we're gonna prepare set which have ingredient rum soda so first we'll put ice in our glass Then put rest of the ingredient. Put some flour. Then put some green dye. Then put some rum. and we will top up with soda and we can garnish this with a cherry thank you next cocktail we are going to prepare is El Presidente the ingredients are white rum, dry vermouth and some green dye syrup. Method we will use is stirred and served in a cocktail glass. First we will take a cocktail glass, we will put some ice, we get it cold, then we will take a stirred glass, we will put 45 ml. Right from, we will add like around 15 ml of vermouth and then a little bit of grenadine syrup. And then we will stir the syrup. We we'll stir like around 10 to 20 seconds or like for 15 seconds as an average. Then we will check the dilution. Okay, so when we get served, take in the cold cocktail glass and a chill cocktail glass. And we will garnish this with a cherry. Thank you. Next rum based cocktail we are going to prepare is Mai Tai. Mai Tai has two variations. One is a classic method, other one is a Caribbean method. In Caribbean, they add some pineapple juice, grenadine syrup, orange, and then with dark rum. Which has three types of rum, dark rum, gold rum, light rum, with orange syrup, shaken well, served over crushed ice. Take some ice and then we will add some golden rum. We will add some light rum. We 
with some orange syrup. This is like almond flavored syrup. I will shake this very well. And then we will put it over 5 times. We will set that egg down and we will add some more fresh egg in the top. Load some dark crumb on the top. And nice chill. You can leave the cherry like this. Cheers. So next cocktail we're gonna prepare is yellow bird. The ingredients are white rum, galliano, triple sec, and lime juice. First we'll take some ice. some white rum galliano triple and so lime juice Cocktail glass. Garnish. Orange. Thank you. So next cocktail we're gonna prepare is planter's punch. Planter's punch in a tall glass. We will add some white rum. The build up method, we can put some sugar cane juice after this. Put stir it. And then we'll garnish with some fruits. Thank you. So next cocktail we're gonna prepare is rum with a view. In this cocktail we use spice trap, coconut rum, blue carasso, lime juice and pineapple juice. All together shaken. And serve in an old fashioned glass. First we put spice rum, we put some coconut rum, 
some pineapple juice A variation of daiquiri that is banana daiquiri. First, we will take and put some ice in a daiquiri glass. We will soon put some cream in the banana. Next, we will put 45 ml of rum. Some 15 ml of sugar syrup and some lemon juice. And the garnish is flambeed banana that we don't have, but just for the knowledge. Thank you. Next cocktail we're gonna prepare is the most famous rum based cocktail, Mojito. For that, we require some lemon wedges. In the classic cocktail, they say use lemon chunks, but usually we don't use lemon chunks because. So we'll take out the seeds. We we'll use like around four chunks of lemon, and we'll add some mint leaves. Then we'll muddle all together. We'll make sure just don't press it so hard. Don't extract the bitter oil of the lemon peel just make sure they will mix with sugar and lemon juice Put white rum 
Four forty five ML. Then we will talk of the a club soda. Extra lemon juice and extra sugar syrup just to give an extra touch or a tangy taste to the mojito. But that's the classic way. And a stir. Cheers. If we add like a orange syrup or almond syrup to the mojito. And we serve in a steel glass, a tall steel glass. It will change it into tikki mojito. Or we can use peach puree nowadays. In the hotel, they use peach puree, they use strawberry puree, or like raspberries to make a variation of the flavorful mojitos. But these two are the classics. So next cocktail we're gonna prepare is tortuga. Tortuga is a rum-based cocktail which has dark rum, orange juice, simple syrup, and lemon juice. Some lemon juice, some simple syrup, and some orange juice. And then we will garnish it with a cinnamon powder, with a spring color cinnamon powder. Cheers. Thank you, Mr. Vinay, for demonstrating rum based cocktails. Thank you, everyone, for joining today's session. Hope it was extremely informative. We will see you tomorrow at the same time. Be safe. Thank you. And Jai Hind.